आई एम शब तलवार और श्री वेंकटेश्वर इंटरनेशनल स्कूल न्यू डेली माई स्टोरीज टाइटल इज द मिस्टेरियस डिजीज दिस इज एन एडवेंचरस अकाउंट ऑफ अ मर्चेंट हु हेल्प द चीफ ऑफ पुलिस टू सॉल्व अ बैफलिंग केस पीपल व किडनेप फ्रॉम फ्लैम वाइट पार्टीज वे दे वोर्स टू सर्व एस एंड एंड सोल्जर्स ऑफ एन आर्मी सेट अप बाय द किडनेपर आर्थर मेट्रिक एज अ स्टोरी एंड फोल्स इट इज रिवील्ड दैट द आर्थर can only be killed by harming his own sister the chief of police when he orders his assistant to do it he gets killed and the city becomes free of his crimes <coughs> now we start we begin the story nicholas was a rich merchant who always loved jokes one day he was invited to a flamboyant party like him all the people were rich but unlike him every one was serious and boring jokingly he asked a nearby person Do you know what it's like to kill a person? The person's eye twitched and his mouth broadened into a wicked smile. He answered maliciously, "Yes." The person dragged him outside the hall. He held Nicholas's hands and disappeared along with him. <coughs> the duo came to a lab. The person forced Nicholas in a glass column. There was no way to get out from there. The person wore his lab coat. On the pocket was written his name, Arthur Bentick. Arthur took a tube filled with green fluid which he poured in the column nicholas screamed as the fluid pierced through his skin he saw himself be covered with blood and his eyes closed eventually suddenly he opened he opened his eyes his head was throbbing he was lying on his doorstep he looked at himself his skin was covered with wounds and bleeding a lot he decided to report that person first he went into the police station a new officer had been stationed there She had blonde hair, but her eyes reminded her of, of summer. Her badge read "Norma Bentick, Chief of Police." Norma asked, "Why have you come here?" Nicholas replied, "I have come here to report of a strange scientist by the name of <coughs> Arthur Bentick." Norma sighed and said, "He is a wanted criminal." Suddenly, Nicholas realized where he had seen those eyes. Those were of Arthur. Norma said, "He is a wanted criminal for crime and murder. Have you checked? Did you have everything that you had at that time?" Nicholas replied, "Yes." Norma then said, "That is good. That he failed to do anything with you, but that is rare. How did he escape?" Nicholas said, "I don't remember." He then saw a report lying on the table. It read, "Murders in the woods." Below was written the name of the compliant, Carl Rockwood, his brother. He was born that day and decided to explore the forest. Rockwood was his brother, living in a rather gloomy mansion in Phoenix. He drove his convertible to the mansion. Inside, he found his brother in a gloomy state in his living room. He took a nearby candelabra and asked, "How did you know about the murders in the woods?" He responded, "Last night at the party, my wife met a man. I didn't see him by face. He talked to my wife sweetly. I took her to the woods." Then there I saw torches and murders done by his men. The duo was in another room where he put her in a glass column. There he poured some gas which almost killed her. Then I saw him inserting something in her body which made her body stiff. <coughs> I shall help you," said Nicholas. He got up and took his car and drove to the woods. It was night. Nothing was clearly visible. Then he spotted some lights. There was a concrete cabin. Nearby was a graveyard. Strange enough, there were no gravestones present there. He sneaked in the cabin. There were many lifelike statues. He acted as one of them and observed. There stood Arthur Bentick. He said, "Take these cocoons to the chamber of warriors. Are all of them stiffened?" An assistant replied, "Yes." He picked all the statues, including Nicholas, and reported them to a chamber. There, Nicholas looked around. There were diseased people all around. When they saw him, Nicholas realized their eyes were red. They cried, leading on to the statues. We are all infected. We all have it here. We all have impericoma. Nicholas got scared as the statues began to stand. He was scouted on all sides. He saw no way to escape. They had wounds all over their body. Blood came out of those wounds. He saw a man with no leg getting closer. He realized that they suffered no pain. Then he plucked the clawed hand of a woman and started digging as fast as he could. The ground was soft, but the people were coming closer. 
He kicked off a bat and plugged his arm with which he backed the living dead away. With a severe hand, he successfully dug a passageway and closed it with two skulls leading to the After many wrong turns, he found his way out in the graveyard. Suddenly, he heard voices from a tomb. He started digging it. After 30 feet, he found a door and opened it. Inside, he found a colossal library. All around, books were scattered. The queer thing was that every book was in a perfect condition. Most of the books were on scientific history, diseases, and the curse, etc. He leafed through them. All of them had one thing in common. The 495th page was missing. He heard the screams again. Help! Nicholas searched every nook and corner of the library, but found nothing. Then he found a slip with a code ED257. Then the screams came again, but with a different word. Encyclopedia of Diseases. Nicholas understood. He took out the second, fifth, and seventh volume of the encyclopedia. The shelf shifted to reveal a man tied head to foot. Nicholas asked, Who are you? Your savior was the response. Nicholas untied him and urged him to elaborate. The man said, I am Victor Shore, Arthur's assistant. When I saw him doing the reaction on you, I immediately took action. Before the gas had any effect, I took you out to breathe. As a punishment, I was kept him. Nicholas asked, What kind of reaction? Victor said, I don't know. Turn to page 494 or 496 of any book. Oh, I said. Nicholas turned and saw a police officer. Came in for a He said, Officer Bentick sent me to watch over you. Victor asked, Is Officer Bentick here? No, was his reply. Nicholas picked the book. Its page read, it's page 494 read, Empericoma is a chronic disease which was wiped out years ago. However, it can be revived by cultivating its bacteria. Page 496 read, Earlier, people got the control over the person who got infected by seeing them first after the re infection. But now, the cultivator gets the control. Father Mull said, So Bentick wants to take control of people. But why? Nicholas said, We will think about that later. But we have to get out of this place now. Everyone gathered in his car. Suddenly, Nicholas saw something moving behind Victor with the help of rare mirrors. He turned behind. He saw no one except Victor. What happened? asked Victor. Nothing, said Nicholas. Then the person appeared again. It came closer to Vic Nicholas. Victor jumped aside. Nicholas stopped the car abruptly. Chief Bentick appeared, she said. I came to see over the situation. I heard that you had come to investigate the case of my murderous twin. Arthur wanted to conquer the world since he was 20 years old. Fall from Bill's surprise asked, So your brother was to conquer the world? But why is he controlling people? Bentick answered. He's creating his own army. We have to stop him. Nicholas asked, For how long is your family living here? She said, For many years, about a century, I think. Is there a book about family secrets in your house? Asked Nicholas. Yes, but it is hidden somewhere in the mansion, answered Chief Bentick. Here it said, Let us explore the Bentick mansion. The Bentick mansion was huge. Everyone entered. Norma showed a map of the mansion. There were some openings which suggested passageways. They divided themselves. All the passages were connected, forming two major ones. Victor and Kevin took out a book and unlocked the passage with a key. They found behind the book and went in. They wandered here and there, but in vain. They at last came out from Arthur's bed on the third floor. Norma and Nicholas went through Norma's wardrobe. The passage looked old. Webs hung from the ceiling. Then a problem came. There was a long bridge which was narrow enough for one person to cross at a time. Nicholas started first and reached the other side. Norma tried to cross but slipped and fell on a stone tile which shifted to reveal the Book of Secrets. The team gathered in the living room to see the book. They leafed until they reached the modern time. On the page of the year 1988, the birth year of Norma and Arthur, there was a prophecy which read, The younger one has to die when the older one shall sigh of pain given by the younger to gain from the loss of the elder. What does it mean? asked Norma. I think 
Elder means the elder twin and the younger means the younger one. Kevin continued, and the elder one has to have something sacrificed by the younger one, so the younger one dies. But the elder one has to sacrifice what? Nicholas answered, something that causes pain, maybe a part of the body. Nonetheless, who's the elder one? I'm the elder, said Norma. I have an idea. You can use me as a bait for Arthur, for he doesn't know this prophecy and may attempt to hurt me. Everyone agreed, but Nicholas, who advised Norma to take a weapon, to which she agreed. The next day was the day when Arthur had started the recreation of his army. To celebrate this day, a jamboree was organized in the graveyard of by Arthur. Norma and Nicholas disguised as one of their assistants and came to the graveyard. When Norma sat down to eat, she was recognized by one of the assistants and taken to the Arthur. Arthur said, Welcome, my dear sister, to my army. He put her in the column, but before he could fill it with gas, Norma took out a small ball, threw it to one of the walls of the columns. The column blasted and shattered. The ball was a tiny bomb. She had brought it on the advice of Nicholas. Arthur, angry, took a knife to kill her, but Nicholas came from behind with a revolver. Arthur shouted, cut her leg to one of the assistants. This was the moment Norma was looking for. The assistant cut her leg, and then suddenly Arthur held his neck. He shouted, but the pain wouldn't stop. Afraid, the assistants ran away. He died moments later. Victor cured the living dead people of Arthur's army with the help of medical books in the top library. Finally, there was no crime left in Boston, and the Rockwoods could lead a carefree life without adventure. Thank you.